Welcome to section 9.1 of genetics. In this section, we will be memorizing the details of Huntington disease. So let's get started. Our scene takes place on a golf course. It all starts with this enthusiastic hunter chasing seagulls onto the golf course. He is actively hunting to remind you that this is Huntington disease. In fact, look at him shoot down all those seagulls. Seagulls will help you remember acetylcholine. In Huntington disease, acetylcholine is low hence the dying birds. Look at all those seagulls on the ground, piling up next to him. Seagulls on the ground, low acetylcholine. Now let's look at this strange looking tree. This represents athetosis. With Huntington disease, patients experience athetosis, which is this twisting and contorting of the fingers. And all of these bizarre shaped branches and the trunk take the shape of athetosis. Now notice all this bark flying off the tree. Well, that's because some hunters decided they'd like to shoot directly at the tree. In fact, I think it's a whole family of hunters, the oldest on the left and the youngest on the far right. This will help you remember that Huntington disease affects patients at younger and younger ages with each successive generation. This is called anticipation. So the oldest member of this hunting family is far on the left, but younger and younger family members are getting involved in this chaotic Huntington disease practice. Near the entrance of the golf course is one of those wacky, waving, inflatable tube men. This will help you remember that Huntington disease patients experience chorea. Chorea describes sudden, jerky movements without purpose. I think we can safely say this tube man is making sudden, jerky, and purposeless movements. And if you thought all this hunting was just for sport, you were wrong. These fellas intend on capturing their spoils and placing them in a cage. They even labeled the cage C-A-G to help you remember Huntington disease is a trinucleotide repeat disorder. C-A-G gets repeated. Well, the label on the cage is spelled wrong, but that is okay. We don't expect a ton from people who senselessly unload their rifles on a tree. In any case, cage for C-A-G repeats. Now let's look at the driving range. This is a golf course after all. This golfer yells four. Oftentimes, before a golfer hits the ball with their golf club, he or she will yell four. This is to warn other people around, just in case they might be in the line of fire to get hit by the golf ball. In any case, this golfer yelling four will help you remember that Huntington disease occurs on chromosome number four. When the golfer hits the ball, a cartoon action symbol appears, which says hit. This will help you remember that the gene affected on chromosome 4 is the HTT gene. It is the HTT gene on chromosome 4 that contains the CAG repeats. Now let's look at the other golfer. He has long since hit his ball, which is now soaring through the air in the direction of the hunters. Sure enough, it hit one of the hunters. A nearby friend of the golf ball's victim yells out, Gabe! This is to help you remember that GABA is low in these patients. As you can plainly see, this Gabe guy is falling down to the ground. So Gabe goes down, GABA goes down. I hope you notice this stream here. In every stream, there is bound to be some fish to catch, specifically codfish. These codfish will help you remember the caudate in the brain. These hunters don't use fishing poles. They use their trusty rifles. So all cod they catch is riddled with bullet holes. These bullet holes will help you remember that the caudate undergoes atrophy in Huntington disease. Their hunting practice also includes the putting area. Notice them shoot up this area. They are shooting holes all over the putting green. This will help you remember putamen atrophy in Huntington disease. Holes in the putting green, putamen atrophy. Now notice the frustration in the golfer here. If you like a nice putting green when you go golfing, you will appreciate this golfer's aggression toward the hunting people. This aggression will help you remember that Huntington disease patients can be very aggressive at times. Sadly, they can also be very depressed. As you can see, this golfer is. Unlike our aggressive golfer, this poor guy responded to the chaos by crying next to a tree. This crying golfer will help you remember that Huntington disease patients can be very depressed. It actually shouldn't be surprising that these patients are depressed. After all, several neurotransmitters are out of whack. GABA is low, acetylcholine is low. This brings us to the last neurochemical we need to discuss, dopamine. Look at all these doped up hooligans in the parking lot. They are clearly high. This will help you remember that dopamine is high in Huntington disease. In fact, this druggie is even hugging the no more drugs or alcohol sign. The letters on this sign will help you remember that NMDA is bound in Huntington disease, which leads to destruction of the brain, such as the caudate and putamen. Now notice the fellows over here. They are playing an innocent game of dominoes. This will help you remember that Huntington disease is autosomal dominant. To reinforce this idea, autosomal dominant diseases are all included in this image. Here is our hunting man to represent Huntington disease. 
And with that autosomal dominant inheritance, we conclude our image of Huntington disease.